physics series. So we're going to continue on with our lesson on cur or mirrors and reflection. Uh, so yesterday or last video, we talked about plane mirrors, just a flat mirror, mirrors that you see every day. And now we're going to talk about curved mirrors and specifically curved mirrors produced by spherical um, reflective surfaces. So very much like this, this is a spherical reflective surface. You can see that on the inside of this surface, that is the reflective material. On the back side, there's nothing there. Uh, so this kind of mirror is called a concave mirror when the reflective surface is on the inside. And this type of mirror, when the reflective surface is on the outside, is called a convex mirror. We're going to see how they can produce the different images. And you can see from this image here that it produces a virtual image. It's as if it's behind the mirror. It's diminished. It's smaller than what it should be. And it's erect. It's in the correct direction, the correct attitude there. Um, these type of mirrors, like uh, concave mirrors, can produce multiple different types of images here. Uh, like if I move it far enough back there, you can see that this is upside down, right? Maybe I can make this a little, a little bit bigger. Right. And you can see that my computer is upside down here. My desk is up there. The roof is down there. So you can flip it over. As you move this inwards, you can see that it starts getting enlarged, enlarged, enlarged. And then all of a sudden, it kind of just goes all wonky. kind of goes all crazy. And then really there. And then, oh, back to normal. Right? So everything's back to the way it was. You can see that my computer screen, why well, you know that chemistry is the right direction there. And you know, I'm sorry about the how dusty this is. Okay. So I can get I can get uh, inverted images, I get enlarged images, I can also get enlarged um, erect images here. So this is much larger than it was before, this is much larger hand there. Okay. So we're going to try to figure out how do you produce those type of images using uh, spherical mirrors. Uh, there's all types of different types of mirrors. You've got parabolic mirrors, um, cubic mirrors. Uh, we're just going to talk about the spherical ones in this lesson. It's a little bit easier, too. So uh, a few things about spherical mirrors. And when we draw out a picture, such as this one here, a um, couple of the... Um, I don't know when you call those things. A couple of the things they have to worry about is what is this line that's going right down the middle here? So this line that's going down the middle is called the principal axis. Principal axis. Now, the principal axis is just a line that goes through the center. And the center is if you were to think about this mirror, right, being a sphere, which is a part of this circle that I'm in right now, if I were to extrapolate it around, it would create a spherical shape and the center would be right in the middle, right? So the middle would be the center. Now, that's where the center point is. So it's like the radius of the sphere, if I make the whole sphere going all around, and then halfway between the center and the vertex. The vertex is just, you know, it's just the middle of the mirror. If I were to draw a line from the mirror towards the center, I draw a line right here. I mean, when it hits that mirror, that's what we call the vertex. So you can draw a line this way too. As long as it goes through the center, we call it the principal axis. If it hits the mirror, that's where the vertex is. We usually just draw it straight across and hits the mirror pretty much in the middle. You don't have to necessarily do that as long as that line goes to the center. Halfway between the mirror and the center is the focal point. It has a very distinct property why we call it the focal point. Okay. So a concave mirror. All right, so let's just list off some of the things here, first of all, before we move on. So this distance, um, that's the radius, which is equal to two times the focal distance, and this being the focal distance down here, okay? So that focal point. Now we've got the principal axis. The principal axis must go through the center of the circle. It's like the diameter. It goes straight on through, hits the... when. If you drop through the center towards this, and then you get the vertex over here. Okay. Now, the reason that this is called the focal point is if I were to draw parallel lines to the principal axis. So let's draw a parallel line here. I can just do that with my tool here. 
if I were to draw a parallel line to the principle of the axis here, and it hits the mirror, what's going to happen is that this is going to reflect off this surface. Well, I'm going to actually draw something else here for you. It's going to reflect off the surface. And remember the law of reflection says that it's going to reflect on either side of the normal line at the same angle. Now, first of all, where's the normal line? So if you remember circle geometry from middle school, uh, if I were to draw a tangent to the circle and then draw perpendicular to the tangent, a line perpendicular to the tangent will go through the center of the circle. So this line that I just drew, I'll just color green there, this line is the normal line. So any line from the circle, from the edge of the mirror there, towards the center is technically the normal line. It's useful for trying to draw where this line is going to reflect. So if I were to measure this angle here, let's call that the incident angle, because that is the incident ray. Now, if I were to draw the ray that reflected, what happens, the ray that reflects goes through the focal point. If I could just draw that a little better there. Okay, so it bounces back and you can see that these two angles here, this angle, and this angle, the, reflect, the reflected angle here, is the same. So that's um, what that focal point is all about. This is also called a converging mirror because if I kept on drawing horizontal lines here, if I draw another horizontal line, which is a little bit higher up, okay, and then I were to draw another reflected ray right here, it would also go through the focal point. If I were to draw another parallel line, so let's just say I would draw one down here. Right about there. Its reflected ray would also go through that point. So this is what we call a converging mirror because all the lines that are parallel converge in that single spot, the focal point of this mirror. They all follow the law of reflection. So if I were to draw in the normal lines here, you can see that all the angles on both sides look relatively the same. So those are all my normal lines. You can see that the angle on both sides of the normal line they look pretty much the same. It would work on the bottom too. I'm only just going to draw the top. Okay. So how do I use this information to help us draw an image? I'm not going to draw a lot of images today. I got some extra pieces here from an app, which I'll put into a link in the Google Classroom as well. That lets you play around with it. I'll just talk about these images in a bit. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you want to draw one of these images, you want to think about what kind of rays can I draw. So what I've drawn here are rays, and this is what a ray diagram looks like. But instant arrays, I've got the reflected rays. I really want to know where the reflected rays of a very specific point on an object converge. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an object. Uh, so you just pick up any random shape, something that you can draw nicely. So I'm just going to draw here a kind of, I don't know, kind of a little house thing here. Okay. So on the top of this, the light is going to hit this, the top of this object. When it hits the top of the object, it's going to reflect outwards in all these different directions. So I got all these rays, and I'm going to trace these rays. So this is called ray tracing. It's very useful when we talk about computer programming and 3D graphics. So you got all these rays kind of bouncing all in different directions, and we're only going to look at a few of these rays. Once I know a few of these rays and where they converge to, then I can find figure out where the image is. So this right here, I'll just label this. This is my object. Okay. Now, before I start, I'd like to know where I am in relation to the object. So if this is my object, I'm on the same side as the object. If this is the mirror. Where my fingers point right now. If the lens, I would say, is the mirror. This is the object. I'm the you know, same side as the object. It would make sense because I can't be on the back side of the mirror, couldn't see anything. So I'm going to put myself right over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put myself over here. 
I'm looking at the mirror. The mirror is going to be over here. So this is the mirror surface. The reflective surface is on this side here. Okay. So this is a concave mirror. It says that on the top of the slide here too. And we're going to draw a few rays coming out from this concave mirror. So let's just draw the one that we talked about already. If I draw a ray that goes straight across, hits that mirror. If I were to do the law of reflection stuff, that ray would bounce back through the focal point. It's just going to extrapolate that way back here. So if you have a straight edge, you can draw this with using a ruler or a straight edge and draw these little, nice little straight lines. Now, a few other lines here, I'll draw another one here, is what if it went through the center? What if it went through the center? We're just going to give this a different color. Okay. So what if this went through the center? Now, the center, if it goes through the center, remember there's a line. If I were to draw this line here, this line that I just drew, we'll call it green, that is a normal line because it goes from the center to where it hit on the, the mirror. So from the center to where it hits on the mirror. So this purple line is on the normal line. So the angle between that vertex and the normal, or between that instant array and the normal line is zero. So the reflected angle is also zero. So if I were to draw a another shape here, like a, the reflected ray, it would reflect backwards along that same line. So it looks like that. I'll just put that purple again. Okay. So that's what that one looks like. So it hits the mirror and bounces straight back because it's coming along the normal line. So it just bounced back on that normal line. Okay. So let's draw. So I got two. And you really only need two um, lines that work nicely to determine where the image is going to be. And I can kind of see where the image is going to be, but I'm going to draw a few more lines here. So another line that we can draw is if it comes from here and it goes towards, well, either the vertex or through the focal point. It's really up to you to decide which one you want to do at this point. Uh, I'm going to just give this a different color, a little blue. Okay. And then what's going to happen to this one if I follow the laws again, draw the normal line in there and I draw the angles, it's going to just come straight back. And you kind of see what happened here with those three arrows so far. We're just worried about the reflected parts. So this line that's going downwards, a line that's going straight across, a line that kind of bounced back on itself, they come to this one point here. Right there, right? So they seem like they're crossing that point. And I could draw another one. There's about four or five different lines we can draw most of the time. Another line I can draw would be if I were to draw it going towards the vertex. And the principal axis, because it goes through the center, the principal axis is a normal line to that point. So if I were to draw the reflected ray, it would bounce back approximately the same angle, top and bottom of that principal axis there. You can kind of see that it crosses through that same point. So we have these four rays, and they all seem to be converging at this point. When they converge at that point, they pass through each other, and then they diverge outwards, and they all kind of be going the same direction there. So they're all going this way, right? Okay? So this is just tricking your mind into thinking if all the rays are coming out from that point, very similar to how all the rays are coming up from the top of this little object we have up here. If I looked at that object, I would see the top of that object because all the rays are coming out from it. If I look at that point down here where all these other rays, the reflective rays are coming out of, my mind is tricked into thinking, oh, since all the lines are coming out of that point, that's where that object should be, or that image should be, sorry. So the image that we get here is right here. So that's the image that we get. We get this kind of little upside down shape. And you saw that when I used this mirror here. Yeah, I get some up down, upside down shapes, right? It looks diminished, looks a bit smaller than what it should be. Right. So a few things about this diagram before we go any further is just some uh, just labeling that we need to know. The height of this object we label as HO, that's the height of the object. 
the height of the image is hi, it's hi. The distance or the position of this image we call di. And if I were to go from here all the way over to this object over here, to this part, we get do. And you notice that when I drew this, the base here is on the principal axis. The base of the image is also on the principal axis. You could follow the same reflection rules and try to determine, is that true? Yeah, as long as you draw the object on the principal axis, then the image will also be on the principal axis too. Okay. And you notice that where I drew, because all these lines were coming out from the top of the object, where they converged here is where the new top of the image is. Okay. So that's essentially how we do that. Now, the characteristics of this, what we see from this, it's a bit smaller. So we're going to see that's a diminished. We can spell diminished, right? Okay. Diminished image. It's on the same side as the observer. So this is what we call a real image. Okay. Uh, it's diminished. Oh, it's also inverted. Okay. So it's inverted. It's upside down. So it's not erect like with the uh, like a plane mirror would give us. And you can see that it's position. It's di. I don't know. We could just say it's di is less than it's do. Right. It's, it's a bit closer than it was before. So that's its position. Okay. So there's an app that can do this quickly for us as well. So I'm not going to go through a bunch of these other diagrams. I'm just going to show you a few examples of what, that if I move that object to different spots, uh, what happens. So here's an object here. I drew an ob or put an object in this app here where I put the object on the center. So this right here is the center point. Okay, so there's the object. Uh, if I draw the main lines, and you can see I, only, I have to really just draw two to figure out where those two points converge. You can see down there. If I were to draw a line that goes straight out or down towards the focal point, if I go straight out based on the laws, I draw my little normal line there if I wanted to. It's going to reflect. It's going to reflect down through the focal point and then continue through. If I go through the focal point, when it reflects off here, it's going to just reflect parallel to the principal axis. You can see that it reflects or it uh, converges at that one point. So I can look at this and say, okay, so this is inverted. It's upside down. Uh, it's neither enlarged or diminished. It's about the same size. Uh, it's a real image because it's on the same side as the observer. I would be over here somewhere looking at this. Okay, so that's where I would be. I'd be looking at the mirror. The mirror surface is over here, so this is the reflective surface here. Okay. Uh, you can see the position is the same. So we get a kind of a different uh, sizing. You can see something's exactly the same. So if I move this a little bit more now, in between the center and the focal point, you can see that. Okay, so I got in between the center point. Uh, I can draw the same lines. I can go straight across, and then it's going to reflect through the focal point. Or I can go through the focal point, and then it's going to reflect back straight uh, horizontal. And you can see that those two lines would converge here. They drew another one here. If I were to draw one as if it came from the center, so what towards the normal line up here, and hit the, if it were to hit the mirror, it would bounce straight back. It would bounce straight back, bounce straight back, bounce straight back, and then come back to this point over here. And you can see that this is enlarged. It's also inverted, and it's real again. Uh, and its position, the di, is much greater than the do this time. So it's the opposite of this other one over here. Okay, so I'm just going to load up the applet that I have here. I'm going to just show you a few different things. Like, okay, so here's the, you can see the image on this side over here. So this is the kind of one we just drew, right? So we've got this uh, inverted diminished shape here. Gets closer, closer, closer here. The object and the uh, the image are the same. Here you can see it's enlarged, 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 getting bigger and bigger. You just can't see it's off the screen. Right here, you only really get an image if the lines were to converge on each other. You can see that my two lines that they can draw here, because I can't go through the focal point because the object's in the way. But I can draw it straight across and then bounces through the focal point. 
or I can go straight up the normal line, then bounce straight back. These two lines are parallel, and you can see here parallel lines and no image. So I have a kind of a blurry situation there. And you kind of see that if I were to do it using this mirror, right? So let me just make this a little bit bigger. So I got my inverted image like we had before. It's been enlarged, 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 enlarged. And right about here, where everything kind of goes crazy, you really don't have a focused image. But you're upside down here. You can see it's upside down. Everything's upside down there. The guy's upside down. And then if I get too close, it flips around. Oh, right there, you can see it flips around. Now it's back to the way it was, right? So blah, and then it's upside down. And then blah, right about there, I lose my image. It's going to flip around and become erect. Let's see what happens there. So it looks like it becomes erect when you get a little too close. Let's get that down. Do, do, do. So no image here, so that's that big blah. And then I move a little bit closer. Oh, where's my image? So over here, these lines don't converge. But if you trace those lines back, they do converge up over here. So I mean, you can see where it says image. There's a big line here. If I just move a little bit closer, you can see that. I'll move over here. So they don't converge over here on the left side. But they, if I trace them back to the right behind the mirror, then we have an image here. So all these other these lines all just follow the same rules through the center, bounce back, straight across through the focal point. This one here that goes up and it goes up and over. That's as if it came from the focal point and then bounced over straight across. But if I trace all those lines back behind the mirror, I get a virtual image. So it's behind the mirror this time. So that's like a, a mirror that you see in your bathroom or your bedroom, right? Um, then this is also upright, or I call we call it erect, right? So it's behind, that's when turned the regular way again. You can see it's enlarged as well. And then if I move closer, it just gets smaller and smaller until it's about the same size, right? So these are all concave mirrors. Now the rules still work, the law of reflection still work if we're talking about a convex mirror. So if I put the reflective surface on the other side here, now if I put the reflective surface on the other side, I just want to mention something. If I show you this demonstration here, here's my concave or convex mirror. So you can see the reflective surfaces on the outside here. If you look at this, nice erect, it looks diminished. Always, it's always the same way. It's always diminished. It's always erect. And technically, it's always a virtual image. So there's only one kind of situation here. This one here, the concave mirror has lots of different options. Like here, this technically is a real image. It's kind of hard to see unless you're here. But looking at this it kind of gives you a little bit of headache because the lines don't quite converge properly. But it's uh, inverted, diminished, then it's inverted, enlarged, then there's no image, and then it's uh, virtual and enlarged as well, but it's erect this time, and this one's inverted. Okay, so concave mirrors give us lots of different situations. Convex mirrors only give us one. They only give us this. If I just put this object on the other side now, you can see it changed to convex here. So this is my object. My image is now on the left here. So I can follow the same rules. I have a line that goes straight Sorry, this line here that goes straight towards the center of the mirror. So that's on the normal line. It's going to bounce straight back. A line that goes towards the focal point will bounce straight parallel. If I'm parallel, it bounces outwards. It's called a diverging mirror, but we call it convex just to keep it different from something else we're going to talk about. Uh, but it bounces as if it's coming out from the focal line. So these three lines that we draw here, they're not... Uh, converging on the right side now, but if I trace them back to the left, trace them back over here, you can see that they converge to this spot. And no matter where I put this, that image is always going to be over there. It's always going to be diminished. It's always going to be erect. And it's always going to be virtual, no matter how far or close I put this in. Okay. Cool. Let's go back to our demonstration here. So I'm just going to skip past this now. You never really have to, I'm never going to tell you to draw a 
a ray diagram of a mirror. Like if you go to University of the Physics Optics course, which is a really fun course if you're going to take any kind of physics course in the university, uh, that's a good course to take. It's a really fun one. Uh, they might ask you to draw ray diagrams, but you know, let's just relearn them again when you do it. You've got a whole textbook of examples and stuff in university too. So I'm not going to ask you to do this. What I'm going to ask you to do is more of the math, right? Using similar triangles and stuff, we're going to actually create an equation to do that. So these ray diagrams, they're just kind of useful to show you how do we get these real images? Um, how do we get an inverted image? How, how does it... Uh, how, what's a virtual image look like? What versus a real image? What's a inverted versus a erect? What's diminished versus a large? How do these things look? Um, but the math is all going to work out for us when we do this in the math lab. Now, the math, the derivation of the formula, I'm just going to use, uh, I'm just going to do an optional video for that one. So the next video you see, will say optional beside it. You don't necessarily have to watch that, just to, how do we use this diagram to develop the formula? But then, if you skip past that, we just go right to the formula and then we just talk about uh, how do we use that formula to solve questions, specific sign conventions as well. What does positive and negatives mean in the formula? Uh, uh, what you really just need to know for the formula is what I already talked about. Like, if this is my image, that's the height of the image, this is the height of the object. We got distances here on the bottom, distance of the object, the distance of the images. The focal length is half from the center to the vertex. The focal length is that half distance there. So this is usually half the radius of the circle. So those kind of things that you'll see in the formula, you can just look at this diagram here if you don't want to go through the derivation. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.